why is Flagstaff only a demo? Because I remember when you recorded that song. And yeah. I think that is a damn near perfect song. Like that's a fucking great song. Excuse my excuse excuse my friend. Uh thank you. And I wish it weren't. The the reason why it's just a demo. It, it was it was meant to be a seven inch. That was that was the idea. We recorded two songs, a song called Sap mm -hmm. and a song called Flagstaff, which were the, the only two songs that we had written after the album. And that it was meant to do like a follow up seven inch, but then the band broke up, gotcha. and we we didn't. It was kind of like mid recording, and I don't even know if the recordings were ever really officially finished. But yeah, that was um, that was that was kind of where we were headed after the album, but that was that's all we got, and it was it was over. I seem to um, recall. I could be wrong. Did that song ever appear in another one of your bands? Or did you just maybe record uh, it? Before? Yeah, yeah. I, I recorded like a like a, a kind of a solo version of it for my first solo EP in 2000 called "The Way Back." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that was on that was on that that was on one one of the versions of "The Way Back." I think there was an early version with without it, but it, it was on anyway. Yes, I I, I did because I liked the song so much. I wanted to keep it in the in the catalog, so to speak. But the March version is but way better, you know, full band, kind of more, a little more ripping. Well, but yeah, it's a, I, it's a really, it's one of, one of the best songs we had. Well, it's yeah. it's interesting because, um, and well, did you guys ever play that live? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Like March played so few shows, we maybe played, a head, you know, ten, twelve shows. I don't know, um, or maybe not, maybe more. It was only a span of a year or a year and a half, and then we were done. But I think I think we did. I think we played it at a show or two. Well, and, and also that song, and I just I drill down on that song just because like you know, I've been listening to that. I've listened to that like forever, and I for the longest time, all I had it on when I would listen to it, it it, it was on like a tape with like. Remember how we used to do like. Like, it, it wasn't even meant to be, like, a mixtape, but you would literally, you would record with a tape, and then if you heard something that you wanted, you know, oh, I'll just throw this tape in, and it didn't matter if it was not like, if the music was, like, nothing like the music that was... Yeah, it was just, like, your 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 hard drive of, of <laughs> right. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just, that song, the structure of that song is is very interesting, because... Correct me if I'm wrong. There's not really a chorus to that song, right? Um, right. But yeah, it, it's like, 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 like. How did that? Like, was that all you and did the band, or did you work on it together with the band? Like, like, how did that come about? Um, that song, I think. I mean, it started with me, and I think I, I, I know, I, I know, I wrote, I know, I know, I wrote all of the lyrics and the the basis of the music. And like most Mark songs, it starts with either me or Mike. And I I started it and then I threw it to Mike and he and Mike added his thing and but yeah, that one that one was sort of like it began with me. And yeah, it's mostly my composition, I guess. But March was pretty evenly split as far as like between Mike and I, like who wrote what and and it was usually like Mike has here. I have some lyrics, and I have a, a like a couple, you know, like a a couple parts on guitar, and then he would throw it to me, and I would say, "Let's put this here and put this here," and then I'll I'll fill in the gaps lyric wise, and then that's how we would write write songs together. Because I remember when you came home, or you were just talking. I just remember coming home from that trip on the train to see your parents, and yeah. you were just like almost disillusioned, like. I always thought I'd get on a train and it would be like, it was almost like a Seinfeld episode. Like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I was so excited because it's, you know, it's such a cliche and I was taking the, the overnight, you know, like the night train to, uh, you know, to my parents, they had moved to Arizona and I, I had this sort of romantic vision of what that would be. And it wasn't, it was annoying and I couldn't sleep and there was, you know, terrible people on the, on the train and it just was, and I, I remember just was writing down all of the, all of these things and that became the song but yeah you know I, I i had high expectations for what you know taking a you know 
taking the train at night and, and it was not, not the experience <laughs> I was hoping for, but you know, cool song. Um, yeah. off, off topic, but on topic in a situation like that, were you sleeping in your seat or did you have a compartment? Like, Oh no. Yeah. I was just, just my seat. Yeah. There, I'm, I, I just, I, we, you know, cheap seats. Okay. I, I wasn't paying, I wasn't paying for the, for the, uh, you know, the little, uh, lay down. Right. Home sweet. <laughs> so now something I, I wondered then never got to ask you. And now that we're talking, but I mean, it, I, it's a moot point. And, but, and I, and I understand it more now, um, is this, um, when you started March game face was freaking going really, really strong in terms of, yeah. in terms of where you were in the band, like, like in like the life of yep. the band and, yep. um, good, Head kind of just came out, but it, it was super duper popular. Um, mm -hmm. And you guys were already starting to record three to get ready. And so yep. I guess my question was, <laughs> why? Well, why? Well, well, yeah, yeah, why? But <laughs> but like like I guess why was it was it like you just had because the because the thing about it is um, that that March record doesn't sound like leftovers of anything. Like that record is. Yeah. A very so I'm I guess I'm just amazed that you had kind of that much in you like like to just give that much is um, that why? Yes, Game Face was definitely hot and heavy at the time, and 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 there was a lot of high running emotions when I decided to do a side project. But the reason, I mean, and the, my excuse and reason is I I write a lot of songs. I write a lot of songs, and. They're not always like, you know, Game Face did one thing and we got good at, we got, we got very good at the one thing that we did, but I knew that Game Face was going to, to basically Game Face was doing this. And I, you know, I like a lot of different types of music and I, well, I like, I like, I like, I don't like a lot, a lot of different types of music, but I like a few different types of rock music. And so the, I, um, I've been. I had written songs that I just. I didn't think that Game Face was going to be able to do justice, um, or you know, they wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't be. I wouldn't be able to express in the sort of Game Face language. So that was shelved for this pro project. And then Mike and Mike and I. You know, Mike. Mike and I go way back. You know, from high school. We were in high, bands in high, uh, high school together, and and we had you know been on and off talking about doing a project and it just has it just happened at the at that time it's a very important time for a game phase we were recording you know what would have been or what would go on to be the you know a, a very important record for us and and but i didn't want to i didn't want to just i didn't want to not um go with that muse to do this other thing because it's uh, something was equally as important to me it didn't go over well with the guys in the group. They didn't, the Game Face guys definitely did not like it. They thought it was taking my attention away from them. It was taking my attention away and it, and, and they thought it might take other others attention away from the band. I don't think that's true. Um, I, I don't, I think that that kind of one hand washes the other, you know, like I think that if you're, I think that, I think it's important to 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 be doing different things. Um, I think one helps the other. My songwriting in one band helps my songwriting in the other, and vice versa. And um, and also, who cares? You know, we were just we were kids, and we were just playing music. And it it in the long, in the long run, it didn't do. You know, March was a blip on the radar. Well, and at that point in your life, you you would have had no problem playing more. You're like, you know what I mean? Like, oh you, no, you I think, I mean, that, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to even want to have a job. I just wanted just to play, go out and, and play. And, and yeah, so that was great. It was like, more is more. More is, was, it was great for me. Um, but yeah, there was definitely some pushback and, you know, and, and they, they didn't like it, but I think that we've all come to look back and, and, and think that there, there's no reason for, for any, any trouble with, with that. But so, yeah, so I, I had a bunch of song ideas that weren't, just weren't going to work for Game Face. And um, similarly, Dennis from Outspoken was like, I, I have some, you know, I, I'd love to play some different 
type of music too. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I love shouty hardcore, but I also, you know, I also love built to spill and Buffalo Tom. And, and so we had a, a connection with a similar type of, uh, you know, of, of that sort of indie rock type of thing. And that's how, yeah, that's, it, it, it came together pretty quickly, I guess. And so you grabbed and it, Dennis, and it quickly. you grabbed Dennis and then did you get Mike and George? Cause had they been playing together? Um, well, it, it was Mike and I were first, like Mike and I were, were, and then we, and then I somehow Dennis got on board. We, uh, you know, of course we knew him cause through network sound and, and, and all through our scene. And we wanted a bass player that wasn't from our scene. And we, I worked with George. I, I knew him and, 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 and he maybe wasn't the perfect fit for the band, but he was, an, he was a guy talented, driven, Oh yeah. Wanted to be wanted to be in a band, and it was like let's just let's do this. Let's make it as let's try to get this as different as possible, because you know we we could have grabbed anyone from any one of the bands that were in our little circle, you know any any, any bass player or drummer or whatever. But um, yeah, I wanted it to, to just sort of be that much more removed from our our scene. So yeah, and that's and we just. I think we just started. We just started playing mine and Mike's songs, and it just it, it it went came together pretty quickly. Quickly, I think. And did you and Mike? I don't remember if you said this just now, um, but did you and Mike already have songs from the past that you brought to this, or like yeah? We we had all we've been like like since our band in 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 high school, like when I was a junior in high school. And what or, was that band called? The, no such thing. I Mike and I were, sure. Yeah, Mike and I had no such thing. And since then, we had been, you know, we would like trade songs. Like he would send me tapes. We did a couple of little projects in between no such thing and what would turn into being March. We did a bunch of little projects just between that that never, you know, some of them didn't even have names, but we just had, we always had songs. Mike would send me cassettes. I would also, you know, do the same. And we just had, we had a little backlog of, of stuff. So we had, uh, definitely had a handful of songs that were sort of ready to go when George and Dennis came on board. That's one so, thing yeah, I think that really helps in making that record special is the fact that like, if you know, sort of, okay, wait a minute, these guys have played together for a long time. I mean, I guess back then it wasn't like a long time. I mean, it's a long time from now, but yeah, like, yeah. but there's that, picture of you guys on the record is like young kid like i i, I just oh, think yeah. it's like perfect like it's, it's yeah, such he, a... yeah. He, he lived up, up the street in, the, in our neighborhood you know we weren't like super close um growing up but when we sort of you know in, in high school when we you know I, I like i knew him back in the day like when we were playing like soccer kids soccer but uh then we we ended up being like one of you know one of the six kids at our high school that liked punk and so that's how you know we, we that's how we ended up knowing each other. And that I mean that's how that, 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 that's how we ended up being actually you know being friends. And that and that neighborhood to kind of tie this all together was Irvine. Well, the uh, Green Tree, Green Tree was oh. was the tr housing tract in Irvine, and of course Green Tree is the a, a song from Game Face. Who produced that March record? I, I want to say that I know, but and I was gonna look it up because I still have the CD. But then I'm like, you, you know what? Just like, uh -huh. yeah, like it, it was E E E for the record, and E was awesome. Like E E really loved. He loved the he loved the band. He thought like it. I think that because he was doing a lot of like hardcore and punk music at for the record. I think he it was a nice change of pace for him. It's a little bit more his t musical taste, perhaps. But he, he I, I, I got the feeling that he was really, that he really liked the record. He was kind of going out of his way to, to help, to help out. He had said, because he had ideas too, and he's like, and, and even on the uh, album, he's credited as Eric because his full name is Eric Garten or Eric O'Brien Garten, and I think he's credited as Eric. 49% O'Brien Garten because he said that I have ideas and I'm going to push them all on you, but I only have 49% of the vote. So ultimately your 51% will override my thing. But he was really, 
I think he felt invested in it because he, he really liked it. 